I would now like to invite our guest of honor, Dr. Pawan Duggal, who is a founder and chairman of International Commission on Cyber Security Law. Pawan Duggal, sir, is the president of CyberLaws.net, who has been working in the pioneering area of cyber law, cyber security law, and mobile law. While a practicing advocate, Supreme Court of India, Pawan Duggal has made an immense impact with an international reputation as an expert and authority on cyber law, cyber security law, and e-commerce law. Sir has been acknowledged as one of the top 10 cyber lawyers around the world. I would like to call him for the validatory speech of the session. Over to you, sir. Thank you, ma'am, for those kind words, distinguished uh, personalities, uh, the guests, of owners, the jurists, friends, ladies and gentlemen. It's been a pleasure uh, to be with you online. Technology is a great teacher. And the one thing that technology has taught us is that we can never master technology. Technology will continue to keep on uh, going and putting in appropriate surprises as we go forward. So as we uh, are now looking at the cyber legal aspects of technology, we have to be mindful of the fact that our technologies could potentially play a very, very significant role in the direction of not just appropriately guiding us, but also in the direction of appropriately molding our cyber legal jurisprudence. Clearly, when we talk of cyber law as a jurisprudence, it's continuing to evolve and will keep on evolving. Let me give you an example. If we were to write a book of cyber law in the year 2030, and we are end of 2021, then we have only written the 10th to the 12th page of this 100-page book. The remaining 88 odd pages will have to be written down. And that will just give you an inkling of how things are happening vis-a-vis -vis cyber legal jurisprudence. In fact, COVID-19 has been an irreversible catalyst in the history of the internet. Apologies for my uh, mask going up and down because I'm on the road and I'm asking my colleague to just put the car on the side as we talk. Uh, so COVID-19, I believe, has been the single biggest change element that we've seen in our living memories. COVID-19 is not just a public health emergency. It's also a pandemic. It's a cyber pandemic. And it's also an infodemic. So in this kind of an ecosystem, COVID-19 has had impact on every aspect of human activity and endeavor. And clearly cyber law as a paradigm has not really escaped the attention of uh, COVID-19. No wonder we have begun to start seeing massive increases in the way how cyber legal jurisprudence has been evolving in uh, cyberspace during COVID-19. COVID-19 has led to an irreversible shift in our mindsets. Let's now face it. The world post-COVID-19 will never be the same as the world pre-COVID-19. And internet and cyberspace will never be the same again. In fact, we now have to look at the entire world with a new color of lenses, primarily because the ground realities have changed. During COVID-19, I had this opportunity to examine closely the impact of COVID-19 on cyberspace. And I've written a book called New Cyber World Order Post-COVID-19. In this book, I've argued that by the time the nations are victorious against the current and subsequent wave of COVID-19 infections, we will all enter into a new cyber age where a new cyber world order is going to await us. In this new cyber world order, states are going to get very powerful. But two of the most significant elements of this new cyber age will be that not only will cybercrime be a part of our day-to-day -day lives, but cybersecurity breaches increasingly will become the new default normal. And uh, we will also likely to be seeing a scenario where more and more users on the superficial net would potentially be migrating onto the dark net because there's going to be an increasing propensity amongst nation states to interfere in the enjoyment of digital liberties and freedoms. So in this context, cyber law has to evolve. There's no two doubts about it. 
you look at the way how uh, cyber law as a discipline is evolving what ultimately began as a small sector specific vertical uh, discipline of law has now today become a mammoth umbrella this umbrella is constantly growing and under this big umbrella smaller sub disciplines of law are beginning to keep on emerging whether it's cyber security law whether it's artificial intelligence law internet of things law or even quantum computing law so cyber law as a discipline will continue to keep on increasing number 2 cyber law as a discipline will keep on now engaging our attention and will keep on governing our activities because more and more people are increasingly dependent on the electronic format for a variety of their day to day activities now when we do any activity online we will have to be mindful that every activity of ours has legal ramifications and if we are not uh, being cautious or careful the chances of uh, these legal ramifications or impact ultimately prejudicially affecting us cannot be ruled out further let's now be mindful of the fact that there will be now increasing cyber crime the coming of covid-19 has seen the beginning of the golden age of cyber crime this is the golden age where cyber crime of the kind manner and manifestations that we are now seeing are unprecedented cyber crime has been with us for the last more than 50 years but the new manner in which how cyber crime has begun to start evolving the new avatars and the economic losses are unprecedented the year 2020 so the world losing more than 6 trillion dollars thanks to cyber crimes and cyber security breaches come 2021 end and the world is likely to see uh, the world to be losing more than 8 trillion dollars thanks to cyber crime and cyber security breaches so these new changed ground realities unless we don't have adequate cyber legal frameworks to effectively go ahead and uh, govern and regulate activities in the online space it's going to be big and big problem for all of us and now with covid-19 towards coming towards its end though nobody can really say its end why because with omicron emerging in a big manner and a big wave of omicron expected in the uk in january and also in india in the coming times we can never really rest on our laurels but meanwhile the legislations the judge made laws are increasingly now molding the cyber legal jurisprudence Fiji has become the latest country to join the big boys club of having a dedicated cyber crime law. We've seen Kenya coming up with dedicated legal frameworks. We've now seen new legal frameworks coming up in other countries. And in invariably whatever countries are today legislating are invariably going to have ramifications on activities in cyberspace or the digital format. Let's get one thing very clear. cyber law is not just the law pertaining to internet cyber law is now far more broader and pertains to all legal policy and regulatory aspects pertaining to not just uh, cyber space internet but also the digital and mobile ecosystem so any activity that you done do using computer systems or communication devices are equally going to be covered under the ambit of cyber law just as any activities that you do in the online space now while all this is happening something is happening on a societal basis well fear and panic have been two essential corroborators and uh, shall i say essential elements of our day to day lives during covid 19 but we've also seen as more and more people jumped on to the digital bandwagon and as more and more indians became cyber natives and cyber users this story started engulfing a new phenomenon a new revolution took over i call it the great indian vomiting revolution indians have been now vomiting data about their personal professional social lives without really understanding the legal policy or the regulatory ramifications pertaining to the same so as cyber legal frameworks are evolving we will have to be mindful why because we are ultimately leaving behind a lot of digital dust this digital dust is going to be used by state and non state actors for the purposes of potentially targeting us for even monitoring surveilling upon us so in a scenario like this it becomes even more important that we have to be mindful of our activities in cyberspace well the right to access in the internet is now an integral part of 
not just the fundamental rights of countries, but also part of basic human right. Why? Because today you cannot live a dignified human life without having access to the internet. But does that mean that the right to uh, be forgotten is also an integral part of your lives? Well, that's where countries are now beginning to slightly differ. The European Union, in the General Data Protection Regulation, has clearly said that every European citizen has got a fundamental right to be forgotten, which means that they have a right to insist upon the service provider to remove content which uh, is showing them in a bad light. India, for example, has still not yet legislated on a right to be forgotten. The Supreme Court in the landmark case of Justice Puttaswamy versus Union of India has categorically held the right to privacy as a fundamental right of ours under Article 21 of the Constitution. But the right to be forgotten is still yet being distinguished from the right to privacy. No wonder the Personal Data Protection Bill 2019, tabled before the Parliament, has now sought to provide us uh, with the, a statutory right to be forgotten. Now, that assumes more significance as data service providers are getting very, very powerful. There are humongous data repositories, and they are constantly uh, not just saving our data, but also using and monetizing the same to our own detriment. So in this ecosystem, every step that we take will have legal ramifications. The law already defines cybercrime in a number of manners, but the time has come that we should start making a dis conscious decision and distinction to find out what activity of ours is falling within cybercrime versus what is not falling within cybercrime. As we go forward, we are now going to be seeing some very exciting era because artificial intelligence has come in a big manner. And the coming of artificial intelligence also throws up new paradigms of uh, legal problems and issues. Is artificial intelligence a legal entity? Can the law consider artificial intelligence as a company? And if so, what are the legal ramifications? What happens if the artificial intelligence uh, says and does some activity which goes contrary to basic human logic? And what happens if uh, artificial intelligence goes rogue or goes the wrong way? How do we check that out? All these are very important, pertinent questions that different stakeholders are beginning to now start addressing. Already the state of Illinois in the US has become the first state in the world to have come up with a dedicated law on uh, artificial intelligence. But now with the draft artificial intelligence law of the European Union coming out for public comments and discussions clearly tells us that the world is moving towards a new paradigm. These newly emerging technologies, whether it's artificial intelligence, blockchain, or internet of things, are all opening up a new van, new uh, vantage points, new horizons for further growth of cyber legal jurisprudence. The internet of things is now opening up far more distinctive avenues of how individuals' digital privacy can be breached and can be infringed without often their knowing. So no wonder when we talk of informed citizenry, it's important that we all have to contribute towards becoming informed elements of uh, an informed citizenry. And ultimately, as we go forward, while the law will keep on evolving, there is also going to be a need for proactive uh, action by people. Somewhere on the line as we go forward, it will be imperative that we must start adopting cybersecurity as a way of life if we really have to protect ourselves and our activities in cyberspace. And remember, nobody is big or small on the internet. Everybody is a potential target. It's a given yes that you are going to be targeted. It's only a question of when. It's not a question of if you're going to be targeted. So in a scenario like this, it's a new world which is now waiting for us. And therefore, adoption of new cyber skill sets and cyber capacity building becomes of crucial importance. The very fact that this web, uh, online moot code competition is taking place is ultimately also sensitizing you on how to develop your online moot, mooting skills. And apart from this, as uh, the new generation users of the internet, you have to be prepared for a new future. Therefore, enhanced capacity building has to be the mantra. And there's massive need. There are massive figures that's showing up. We created an online platform called cyberlawuniversity.com a couple of years back and started offering some courses on cyber law, cyber crime law, cyber security law, artificial intelligence law, blockchain law, and IoT law. Within three years, the uh, courses have been done by more than 27,000 students from 172 countries, speaking 50.
Sir, you have to unmute. So as law students who are working in cyber law, please just do not only hone your cyber law skills, also hone your digital skills. Because ultimately, this new world that you are now waking up will require a new mindset. The pre-COVID mindset has to be given a complete go-by. We must learn to unlearn, relearn, unlearn, relearn all the time. And that's now the new mantra. Therefore, I believe uh, whosoever wins this moot court competition, uh, congratulations to that winner. But then, according to me, every one of you is a winner. Why? Because every one of you are at least part of that very selective group of people who are participating in this national online moot court competition and honing your digital skill sets. And each one of you, I believe, are getting more equipped to deal with a very uncertain future that lies ahead. But all said and done, I think cyber law will continue to keep on massively evolving. And therefore, there'll be need for doing much more of these national moot courts on uh, competitions on cyber law and related issues, apart from cyber security law and other related disciplines. I would like to take this opportunity to the organizers uh, for thanking them for the purposes of uh, giving me this uh, particular location for me to come and share your thought, my thought processes with you during uh, this validity function. Congratulations and wishing the, everyone, not just the winners, but every participants, all the very best. Thank you. And with that, over to you, Madam Chairperson. Thank you so much, sir, for taking out your valuable time. and.